You ever wonder how other streamers get their alerts to pop off in the background when they're doing a live broadcast? It's pretty easy, which is why I'm gonna show you how to do it with just a few simple clicks that anyone can do. And you're just gonna love it. And guess what? We're gonna get started right after this. It's pretty dope. Let's go. Hey all, Wild for Games here. In one of my last videos, I showed you a really cool product from Owned.TV where you could make your own emotes based on an avatar that looks like you. And I wanna let you know, they're having an awesome sale right now if you want emotes that look like you, which a lot of us do. So head on over to Owned and go under their emote maker and you will get dozens and dozens of different style characters, emotes, and styles that you can export and load into your stream today and start using right away. Make sure to use the coupon code at the bottom of their page to save some extra cash and click through my links to save even more. Welcome back all you awesome streamers. Wild here to help you become bigger and better. And like I said, in this video, I'm gonna show you essentially how to use the projection mode or what is now known as multi-view. And it's really easy. I'm gonna show you how to set it up on slobs and OBS so that way everybody's covered out there. Now, before we really dive into it, there's some really cool things that you can do when you have a source in the background. You can have it set up so that way it shows your gameplay so that way it's a little more interactive and it gives a nice little 3D effect that's going on. Or if you wanna set it up to just be your alerts so that way you can show your event list, alerts going off for follow and subscriptions. Or if you're a Twitch streamer, you can see all the bits that you're collecting in a nice little source that you set up. I mean, it's really up to you. Just chatting, hey, throw your chat up in the back. This is where you get to experiment and have some fun. Let's talk equipment real quick. If you want a physical display, you need something that's a physical display. Hence, a TV, a monitor, or projector out there. Likewise, we need something to send the signal over to it, which is usually gonna be like a DPI cable or an HDMI cable, or if you're super fancy out there, you can get one of those wireless HDMI hub boxes that just sends a signal back and forth. Super fancy, but a little expensive. For this example here, I'm just using a basic TV that somebody donated to me after they upgraded a new one in their house. And I'm just using a 15 foot extended HDMI cable that's connecting from the back of the TV to my computer tower. If you want to display certain elements on your monitor in the background, you first need to make a scene and source specifically for that in OBS. I, for this tutorial, made one called Projector that really only shows my graphics plus my alerts display on the background. To get that to show on the monitor behind me, all you do is right click on the scene or source and go down to full screen projector. Here it's gonna display all your monitor sources that you have. The first two for me are the ones that I use to actually broadcast and play games. And the last one is the TV behind me. And there you go, super simple. So now when you're streaming and you get like an alert or an event that triggers off, it'll display on the monitor in the background, giving you that interactive look that you were trying to achieve. If you wanna show different scenes and sources on your display in the background, that's really easy. Within OBS, go up to the main display window and right click on it. When you scroll down to full screen projection preview, go to the source that you're pushing out to. And now when you switch scenes just like this, you're gonna get all the scenes that change with you in OBS, making it nice and easy. And you know, this way it makes it a little more interactive if that's what you're going for. If you wanna show an actual full studio setup, which can be really cool depending on the type of streamer that you are, if you go to the top where it's got view and you go down to multi-view full screen and you select the source you're outputting to again, people can see how everything moves on the background and how you kind of operate your stream. Kind of cool for podcasts or just chatting. Really quick side note, if you notice in the background that your scenes and sources start to pop in and out just like this or don't display at all, it's all because of how you put the property settings for these elements in there. So you wanna make sure that you right click on all of them, make sure loop is on, and you may have to tick off close file when inactive. So that way when you click back and forth between scenes and sources, that it won't disappear or go away. You also may wanna tick on restart playback when source becomes active, depending on what source you're putting in, so that way you get a fresh look at it for when you go over to that scene or source. If you wanna output a specific source, like your bits, tip jar, subscriptions, event list, anything like that, really easy to do, just like that. All you gotta do, right click on that specific source and output it the same way. 
This is one of my favorites if you have like a custom tip jar, because then you can put a full on awesome graphic in the background that really resonates with your custom style branding and stream. If you're a live streamer that uses three monitors and your camera angle shows one of the three and you wanna output sources to it, but you still wanna have access to that monitor if you need it, whether it be the taskbar or anything like that, you can right click on the scene and scroll down to window projector scene. And this will move it within a small little window that will be dynamic and responsive. So that way you can move it wherever you need it to go and resize it, but still have access to the lower taskbar if you need it. If you're a Streamlabs user and you wanna display something in the background, it's just as easy. When you open up Streamlabs OBS and your main video display, just right click on it and scroll down to create output projector. Now it's gonna give you all the sources that you can project out to. Obviously pick the one that's gonna be in the background for you. See, super easy. Now when you get any type of triggered alert, it will display in the background when you use Streamlabs OBS. Really awesome. Now just to let you know, when you do it this particular way and you change any of your scenes, it will change with you. Just to let you know, everything in the background, just like that, so that way you'll be good and ready if you want it this way. If you want it to be a specific scene that you always want to be displayed on the background, go down to where your scenes window is, right click on it and tick on create scene projector. This again will allow you to pick and choose what source you wanna push out to. Just pick the correct display. Now when you click on certain scenes and you go back and forth, your OBS will change, but the projection in the background won't change at all. Just to let you know, I've noticed a little bit of a bug sometimes where you have to do this step two times in a row. So that way the program knows that it wants to be locked on a specific scene. So don't be annoyed if it doesn't work the first time, just do it again and then it will lock. The only downside I've noticed with Streamlabs OBS and when you wanna push something out to a background display, unlike OBS where you can select a certain asset or element that you wanna display in the background, like your tip jar or bit jar, whatever you wanna call it, Streamlabs OBS doesn't allow you to output just one element or one source. If I wanna show my tip jar, I have to make a scene that only has my tip jar in the background. So that way when I get their triggered alerts for it, it will show in the background there. But again, you can stylize this to whichever way you want. But just to let you know, you have to make your own scene for it, okay? Woo, that was a lot of information, but now you know everything you need to know to dominate, to put a display in your background. Hey, you don't have to limit yourself to just a monitor or a TV like I have. A really cool trick you can do is use a projector. Now, just to let you know, it needs to be super, super dark in your room to get any clarity because you know you need to have that contrast to get an image that will produce when you're live streaming and it's displaying in the background. So this will only work for some people, but if you have a big blank wall and you wanna put a really cool source up there, a projector is really, really awesome because it gives you a really cool kind of stylized flair to your stream that not a lot of people can pull off. If you wanna put a physical display in the background of your live stream, you need to check on a few things. Your CPU and GPU need to be able to handle the extra pixels you'll be pushing out. In addition to your GPU, you wanna make sure it's not gonna be maxed out when you introduce these new displays because a lot might actually be going beyond their limit and they might not be able to do it effectively, which could require you to put in a second GPU so you can do this or have a two computer stream set up. You also need to check the back of your GPU to make sure you have enough ports. So if you wanna output, it can do that. There's a lot of things you need to take a look at before you jump into this. So please do your research. In addition, if you have a web camera or a DSLR, you have to decide if you wanna have something in the background be in focus or have a shallow depth of field, or perhaps you want it to be really bokeh out. So there's a lot of variables here that you kind of need a test to fit the style and flair for what you're going with. I think outputting certain scenes and sources and elements and assets to the background of your stream is a really cool thing. And my favorite would have to be the bit jar, which is why I would recommend you should get a customized one. And my friend John Grimm did an awesome video on how you can have a custom one or how you can make your own, or hey, just download one of the free ones he made for all of you out there. Putting that video over the side. Until next time, my name's Wild for Games, helping you become bigger and better with all your streaming needs. And as always, take care and of course, peace.